Hey everybody, it's Dr. P.A., founder of P.A. and Associates, and welcome to my weekly combo. This week I'm going to be talking about social emotional learning. I wanted to touch base with you to tell you that this entire month of April, PA and Associates will be highlighting supports and information that can help students in the classroom and teachers in the classroom and administrators in the school to create an environment where SEL actually thrives. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, but I want to talk to you about how SEL is holistic. Okay, at PA and Associates, we believe in a whole child approach. That means that you have to ensure that your behavior and your academic supports work together to support student success. You cannot have one without the other, all right? They have to be merged in order to actually be implemented correctly and get the goals that you want to get in your school and in your classroom. The next thing that I want to talk about is the different elements of SEL what it looks like when you are implementing it in the classroom as a teacher, what it looks like for students, what it looks like for administrators, because everybody has to be on the same page in order for it to actually work. I feel that a lot of people have a um, misconstrued idea about what SEO actually is. So today's convo is gonna focus on those elements that work together to create social emotional learning so the very first thing that i want to talk about is mindset now this is important because you have to be open to the idea that seo actually works okay in order to be able to implement it in the way that i'm going to discuss today that means understanding that you need to have an idea of what your student needs are okay that means recognizing that you have some students who are going to come to you with a greater load than other students, which simply means that they're experiencing things outside of school that a typical kid their age would not experience and is actually affecting their work inside of school. Now, I want to say this and I want you to be able to accept it with love because it's coming from my heart. Effective teachers actually make a conscious effort to build relationships because relationships are foundational to everything that you do in your classroom and how effective it actually is, all right? And it has been proven that connectedness has a direct effect on learning outcomes. So think about that for a minute, especially while I'm going through this presentation today. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is classroom supports, and this is how it actually works with the teacher, all right? As a teacher, you want to make sure that you have clear and consistent expectations. Your students should know what to expect when they come to you. They should know what those expectations look like and what they don't look like, and you want to make sure that you are consistent. They should not show up to you and not have an understanding of what it is that you expect from them or what it is that they need to do throughout the school day. The other thing is the big ideas. And that just simply means everything that's happening within that environment that affects student outcomes. That's your instructional practices. That's your curriculum that you're using. That's differentiation. Those are the big ideas that you really have to consider when you're creating an environment where social emotional learning can actually thrive. The other thing is energy and mindset. And I know that we've been experiencing an increase in challenging behaviors, especially since the pandemic. And we want to unconsciously, we tell ourselves to match energy. Now this really relates to us as adults because we're teachers and we're leading the way. And we set the example for our students to follow. So you don't want to match energy. What you want to do instead is create energy. All right, have students follow your energy and make sure that you address your mindset before you start teaching each day. Where's your mindset at? What are you thinking of? What are your goals and priorities? How are you feeling? All right, practice self care. Even if other people don't make it a priority, you should always make it a priority because it's going to directly influence how you operate in your classroom. And students have a good idea of what your energy is like and they can feel it and they react to it. So really think about that. The other thing is proactive behavior supports. And this means that you're not simply waiting around for problematic behaviors to happen. What you're gonna do is you're gonna work smarter and not harder. 
So instead of waiting around so that you can react to a misbehavior, you're going to put supports in place to ensure that those behaviors don't show up. All right, you're gonna be proactive about it. And that becomes a little bit easier after you take the opportunity to get to know your kids and build relationships. It's a lot of front loading, but after a while it gets easier and you'll actually see that it's more of a benefit. The other thing is character development. We're not going to um, give our students the opportunity to just guess about what character is, what it looks like to have good character, what character traits are. We're going to give that information, all right? We're going to give them the opportunity for them to practice character, for them to reflect on their character, for them to recognize good character traits, okay, together and build their character because they're growing and they're learning with you. The other thing is community building. Just like we want to feel as if we're a part of something, kids want to feel as if they belong. They want to know that they belong to somewhere that is safe, that is welcoming, that they can feel um, safe to talk about issues or anything that's impacting their learning or safe to even answer questions in your classroom and not be afraid of being wrong, all right? You want to build a classroom that fosters community. All right, we're gonna move on. Now, not all scars can be seen. And this just goes back to what I talked about when I said that some students come to you with a larger load than other students. So you want to make sure that you have those mental wellness supports in place to support those students who actually come to you with more baggage. And even those ones that come to you with small baggage, all right? Mental wellness is important. It's important to ourselves as adults and it's also important to students, okay? So what does that look like um, for student support? Number one is team building. Opportunities for them to work together, to accomplish goals, to create, all right? To work as a team. Those are the skills that they're actually going to need outside of school when they go to a job interview, when they work together on a collaborative project. All of those skills with team building, they're important. All right, and it makes them feel as if they're as if they belong. The other thing is circles. Circles is where you give your students the opportunity to come together to talk about topics that affect them the most. Doesn't matter if it's an issue that's happened in the classroom, if you have a student who recently lost a loved one, if you're introducing a new topic in English or social studies, doesn't matter. It's an open forum in an organized way for students to express their feelings and their thoughts and also for them to support each other. This actually helps them build more meaningful relationships with their peers. The other thing is check-ins. Take the opportunity to have your students check in with you throughout the school day. What are they feeling like? How are they coming to you? What was their night like? How do they feel this morning coming into class, all right? And I don't want you to overthink it because it does not have to be complicated. It could be as simply as them moving a sticky note that has a feeling from one side of the board to another side of a board. It could be as simple as you asking, how are you feeling today? If you're feeling great, put up one finger. If you're feeling exhausted, put up two fingers so that you know where your students are when they come to you. And also, how are they feeling when they leave you? All right, that is gonna help you with those proactive behavior supports. Because if you know that a student is having an especially hard time because they're exhausted, you can give them the supports they need to get through the school day. The other thing is restorative practices. And restorative practices are especially useful when it comes to healing, when it comes to dealing with conflict, and when it comes to actually arriving at a solution together. And it helps students to actually help them to gain control of their feelings and take responsibility and accountability for their actions while at the same time arriving at solutions. So all of these supports that I mentioned help with the mental wellness of your students. So, so far we've talked about classroom supports, we've talked about mental wellness supports for students. Let's go ahead and move on to organizational supports. Now, so social emotional learning cannot just be implemented in the classroom. Well, it can, but if you really want it to be effective, you want to make sure that everybody's on the page. And when I say everybody, I'm speaking of teachers, I'm speaking of support staff, I'm speaking of students, I'm speaking of admin, I'm speaking of community members, all right? When everybody's on the same page and they share the same objectives, then that is when social emotional learning actually works. 
So what are the organizational supports that's needed to support social emotional learning school-wide? The very first one is school-wide expectations that are aligned with your mission and vision. This is what makes it meaningful. You're setting the stage for what you expect school-wide. And everybody understands what it looks like. Everybody understands what it doesn't look like, just like in the classroom. The other thing is tiered academic and behavior supports, also known as MTSS. You want to make sure that you have the behavior supports and the academic supports in place to support your school students school-wide, okay? And they're tiered. So depending on their level of need, you have those supports in place to support them, all right? A lot of times it's individualized, it's very specific, and it's based on um, academic or behavior goals. The next thing is using school-wide data to actually drive instructional practices. This should not be a case of what you simply feel like or what you simply think should happen. What do the numbers say? What are you using to actually make those school-wide decisions, all right? Because if you take time out to understand those numbers, all right, or that information, it's going to help you make better decisions school-wide. And that fuels those academic and those behavior supports. The other thing is organizational culture. What is the culture of your building? Do your students like to come to school? Do your staff like to come to work? Do they feel supported? Do they feel welcome? Do they feel as if they belong? That's very important, organizational culture. The other thing is staff buy-in. Did you take the time out to work with your staff to show them how beneficial social emotional learning can be? Do they understand the effects that social emotional learning can have on academic performance? The effects that it can have on behavior outcomes? Take some time out and build that with your students so that you can get their buy-in. The other thing is shared decision making. As an administrator, you're making decisions that's going to affect everyone. So you want to make sure that you give people the opportunity and all of your stakeholders the opportunity to have say in the decision making process. And you can determine what that actually looks like. You can set your boundaries and your limits, but you want to make sure that they feel as if they have a voice. The other thing is coaching. Once you give all of these responsibilities to your teacher and you show them what social emotional learning looks like, how are they going to get support with implementation? They need to have someone that they can go to. doesn't matter if it's an outside coach, a mentor teacher, or a lead teacher. There needs to be somebody on hand with more experience than them in social emotional learning that can actually assist them in the classroom when they face a challenge. All right? And the last thing that I'm going to talk about today is accountability. Just being accountable for the decisions that you make and accountable for your reactions throughout the school about different things that are challenging. Just like we expect teachers to be open about the decisions that they're making with their students and give their students a voice and actually be there to support their decisions, the same thing applies to administration. All right, you have to be accountable for the decisions that you make and take responsibility for the, decision that's, for the decisions that you make. Doesn't matter if it's a good decision or if it turned out to be a not so good um, decision. So I wanna recap everything that I've talked about. Number one is social emotional learning is based on a whole child approach, all right? It works together with academics and behavior. They have to come together and be merged in order to effectively implement SEL in the classroom or school-wide. The other thing is supports, classroom supports, mental wellness supports, organizational supports. They all come together to paint the picture and create the systems that you need to make sure that when you implement social emotional learning, it thrives and that it can be sustained over an extended period of time. So at PA and Associates, this is our specialty. This is what we do. Um, behavior is our thing. So if you need additional support with any of the things mentioned in this video, I'm going to go ahead and drop our information below in the comments. Feel free to reach out to us and let us know what it is that you need. Set up a free 30-minute conversation that we can have about what you're experiencing in your school and how we can help you implement social emotional learning. So thank you for joining me in my weekly convo and be on the lookout for the additional um, supports and additional tips that we're going to post um, about SEL for the entire month of April.